My friends went missing after our camping trip. I'm the only one who knows what happened. By Sue Blime. The branches crawled up to the heavens, folding over one another, blocking any sunlight from reaching the ground. It was oddly quiet, save for the commotion of my friends, as the common squawks of birds and the occasional rustling of leaves caused by mammals were nowhere to be found. As Max and I were draping the tarp over the tent, Sarah was setting up the chairs, which now circled the pre-made campfire. Penny, meanwhile, sat on a bench, her face shoved into a generic fantasy novel. The three of us exchanged a glance, watching the blonde's lips subtly open and close as she read along the page. She was so engrossed in the book that she didn't notice Sarah slithering behind her. She grasped Penny's shoulders, causing her to flinch and let out a squeak. She dropped the book, which landed unceremoniously in the dirt, before turning around and glaring at the perpetrator. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Sarah chuckled, raising her hands defensively. You're in a camp with all of your friends, and the best thing you can think of doing is reading a book? Penny, no offense, but that's lame. Penny, who was already fidgeting under the gaze of the group, began wringing her hands together, biting her lip. She turned away, refusing to make eye contact. I didn't want to come here anyway, she murmured under her breath, her attempts to hide her frustrations less than successful. I let out a sigh, leaning on the opposite side of the bench from her. She immediately tilted her head up, teal eyes piercing through my gaze. All right, listen. How does this sound? You can decide what we do today. She perked up at that, though her expression was still laced with uncertainty. Really? Her voice teetered between excitement and skepticism. Yeah, really? Max ushered, trying to give me a look that told me to reconsider my tactic. I simply shook my head, silently telling him I knew what I was doing. He rolled his eyes, but yielded, crossing his arms. Well, um, I guess I've always wanted to see you guys hunt. She trailed off, her nails swiping at the bits of dead skin hanging off her fingers. Sarah's face twisted in confusion, tilting her head to the side. Hunt? Like hunting deer or something? Yeah, um, or rabbits? <laughs> Anything, I guess. Max laughed at the suggestion. Well, we'd have to leave camp for that. Are you sure that's what you want to do? You can't just give up halfway because you're too scared. Penny's face flushed, her hands collapsing in on themselves. N no I won't back out. I want to see, she muttered, her face a candle's flame compared to the forest fire that was Max's. It looked like she was regretting her choice, but didn't want to prove Max right by getting cold feet all of a sudden. Sarah, eyebrows furrowed, opened her mouth to question Penny's decision, only to be cut off by a thunderous clap. All right, well, you heard the boss, Max scoffed rummaging in the car and producing two hunting rifles, one of which he passed to me. Even after how many times I've used it, I still couldn't get over how heavy it was. Its weight dragged me down with it, and I just barely caught myself before it could escape my grasp. Just so you're aware, I began, propping the firearm against a nearby tree as I grabbed my backpack. These are pretty loud, so you're going to want to stay back. They might damage your ears if you're not careful, not to mention hunting takes a really long time. Heck, with how quiet it is, I'm not even sure we're going to see an animal. Oh, and also, okay, we get it, Johnny boy, Max interjected, his tone oozing with sarcasm. Penny's a frail, fragile flower. We'll make sure no deadly rabbit starts, I don't know, gently gnawing on her. Penny's face lit up in hot red. Sarah's giggles hiding the girl's mumble of a response. Let the boys have this one, Sarah attempted to whisper, though her words still reached the two of us. It's the only thing they're good at. I rolled my eyes, slinging the pack out of my back before following Max's steps. That's so. Then I'm sure you can handle yourselves. So I'll be going without... Before I could finish, Penny's shuffling footsteps already reached behind me, her body centimeters away from mine. I could practically hear Sarah's eyes rolling as she awkwardly jogged to catch up with us. It was weird. The woods were usually filled with noise, birds squawking, branches swaying in the wind, and the occasional scurrying of rodents. So when the only sound consisted of dry leaves crumpling beneath our feet, the grip my fingers had on the gun tightened. Sarah attempted to fill the void with snide remarks, only to be silenced by 
much to our surprise, Max. Each hush left her even more flustered, clearly frustrated with having the resident Joker taking her role of the responsible one. I thought that this was all in my head. That my paranoia was causing inconsequential details to appear unnatural. That was until I took a look at Penny. Her eyes, the same hue as the sky above, constantly darted to every corner of the forest. Her body seemed to slouch more and more every time, wrapping her arms around herself to block off any attacker. It was hard to tell if that was just how she usually acted, or if she too felt the urge to check behind her every now and then. I slowed my pace, allowing her smaller strides to keep up with mine. Hey, Penny, I greeted, causing her to look up at me with a start. Her wide eyes seemed to have trouble focusing on anything. I know Max's comment probably made you a little self-conscious, but he's just a jacking, I promise. If you really want to go back, none of us will judge you. Well, besides Max, but again, jacking. She didn't respond, so I pressed on. Do you want to go back? Be honest, all right? She took a moment to mull over the offer before shaking her head. No, making Max wrong is worth staying. I can handle myself. Despite uncertainty lingering in her words, stubbornness overshadowed it. You know, not in a million years would I have expected your first choice for what you wanted to do to be hunting. I mean, no offense whatsoever, but I always thought you were squeamish. She laughed, her hands fidgeting with the straps of her bag. <laughs> no, I'm uh, a big fan of biology. I've seen way worse things in documentaries than a dead deer. Though... I am a little afraid. To see one in person, at least. You're the expert. What should I expect? I smiled, rubbing the back of my neck sheepishly. Honestly, not much. Hunting's a lot of waiting around. Like I said, we're probably not going to see any. Crap! Max's voice rang out across the barren forest, and on instinct, I readied the firearm. There's a wolf! It's... His voice trailed off. The fear that was once haunting the, his words, morphing into confusion. What the heck? Is it dead? I motioned for Penny to say as I approached the carcass, keeping my gun aimed at it just in case. As I neared Ma where Max stood, the reason for his bewilderment became apparent. The corpse, the body of a young wolf, lay just a few meters away, with how its state was almost perfect. I didn't put it past him to assume it was simply sleeping. However, once I walked around it, the chunk of flesh forced out of its throat proved that assumption was false. I winced not because of the fact I had seen the carcass. I've witnessed animals in much worse states, some caused by my hands. No, it wasn't the sight that unsettled me. It was the fact that it was done to a wolf. If it was a deer or a rabbit, sure. I wouldn't question it, but what the heck would take a bite out of a wolf? The potential answers to that question made me shiver, and I stood up deciding that this wasn't safe anymore. However, before I could turn to the group and announce it, Petty brushed past me and kneeled next to the animal, studying its wound. Guys, she murmured, reaching her hand just close enough so that they weren't touching the matted tufts of fur jutting out of the sobbing wound. This bite, it... I don't know how to say it, it just looks weird. It's sloppy. The flesh is all stringy like whatever took the bite had to pull just to tear the flesh off. She pulled her hand away, wiping it on the grass next to her, despite no physical contact being made. The bite marks look small, too. Like a, a house dog or something. A dog, Penny? Really? Sarah's sudden aggression surprised the rest of us, and even she seemed to be taken aback by it. Her nails dug into her skin, a flash of fear overtaking her, who was always the most sound of mine. Do you realize how dumb that sounds? It's probably a wolf or something. Her explanation fell flat. Penny's analysis poking holes in her logic not, but a few seconds ago. What? Why are you freaking out? Did you not think we were going to see a dead animal? Max's attempt at reassuring her was not as successful as he'd hoped. In fact, it only caused her agitation to spike, her words coming out 
with uncharacteristic venom. The two's conversations barely lasted before Penny's meek voice cut through the argument. It doesn't have teeth. The statement, as if it were a sentence from a different language, was met with silence. Sarah's already light face now grew as pale as snow, lower lips barely trembling as she fought back the urge to let her fear show. They're gone. Well, Max scratched the back of his neck, dark eyes glaring through the carcass in an attempt to make sense of the situation. Maybe a native did it. We're close to some native villages and they've got those crazy dang rituals, right? Oh my gosh, Max. Sarah's form now seemed to be quivering, the lightest of touches enough to set her off. Her eyes avoided the wolf with conspicuous intent, clearly attempting to direct her sudden burst of fear toward a different emotion. This isn't the freaking 1800s. You can't say stuff like that, dumbang. Hey. My voice felt foreign, as it was the three who were carrying the majority of the conversation. Sarah, you're right, but let's not turn this into an argument. I'm sure all of us are on edge, so why don't we call it a day and head back? Like heck, he scoffed, arms crossing over one another. A wolf got into a fight, or whatever, it gets some weird injuries and dies. The end. So what? Missing teeth? A massive chunk of its throat gone? And a bite pattern that's apparently similar to a house dog's? I shot back, puffing my chest out in an attempt to at least level the playing field, out with Max's tall stature to little success. You don't see anything wrong with that? I'm just as disappointed as you, man, but I don't want to risk getting mauled over some hunting. His eyes lit up with a fire that indicated this conversation would go nowhere. But the flame was swiftly put out as he sighed. <sighs> Fine. His features softened, guilt etching itself onto his face. Hey, look, I'm sorry, all right? I didn't mean to be a dank or whatever. That's just head back. I felt my shoulders sag, the potential fight draining me more than I cared to admit. It's all good, I patted his shoulder, a gesture he physically cringed at. This was a bad spot to camp anyway. We should have just gone to a public one where we didn't have to worry about any predators. Speak for yourself. Sarah's usual snark finally returned, if a little forced. I actually agreed to come camping because I wanted to be mangled by a bear. <laughs> Max rolled his eyes, though a subtle chuckle still escaped his lips. My attention returned to the crouching girl, her fingers still tracing the edges of the fatal wound. Penny. No response. She seemed to be completely engrossed in the carcass, teal irises practically piercing through the chunks of muscle and flesh. Only when my fingers made contact with her shoulder did she jolt her head up narrowly missing my chin. We're gonna head out, so if you want to stop probing that dead animal, that would be great. A shade of pink splashed across her face as she rose, dusting her hands off. Before she could even finish muttering her apology, Max stopped once again, bringing forth a groan of irritation from Sarah's lips. What now? She hissed, to which Max simply raised a finger to his lips. My heart lurched, expecting to see another carcass. Or worse, the cause of the previous one. But as his lips stretched into that crap-eating grin I knew so much, I wasn't sure if I should have been relieved or even more worried. There's a deer right there, he pointed, and sure enough, with its back facing us, stood a young buck. Its coat was a soft brown, the occasional splotch of white speckling its hind legs. Its head was buried in the foliage, munching away at the leaves and shrubbery. As my eyes flicked between the animal and Max, I noticed him already begun to aim. Like reading my mind, he held a hand up, stopping me from going on another tangent. It's not moving. I have a clear shot. The noise is going to scare whatever animal or monster you guys think is out here. So let me get the shot off before you start... Benchkin. I knew better than to attempt to wrangle the rifle out of his arms. So I instead looked toward Penny. Well, guess you got your wish, I joked, her expression immediately twisting into regret. Uh, but really, 
you should close your ears. It's gonna be really loud. She nodded hesitantly, bringing her palms up and tightening them against her ears. Sarah, rolling her eyes at the display, opted to plug them with the tips of her fingers. She leaned in my direction, her voice barely below a shout, as she tried to compensate for the soon-to-be ringing. Are you gonna cover your ears, or do you want to impress her that bad? Instead of entertaining her jab, I'd slowly pushed my hand closer to her sides, knowing she wouldn't be able to block it without sacrificing her hearing. Hey, hey, I'm sorry, jeez. She shuffled away, opting to shove her fingers back into her ears. Max's finger curled around the trigger, the firearm readying itself for the impending shot, before the percussion of gunfire shook the ground beneath me. A lack of panicked birds fleeing from their homes would have unnerved me if not for the sight of the deer, though I was sure Max got a clean shot through its skull. The animal remained standing. Its only movement consisting of its jaw clamping down harder on the vegetation. Max leaned back, the rifle now aimed to the ground. Once steely eyes were now wide with confusion, dark eyebrows knitted in frustration. He muttered something under his breath, either a curse or a question. Sarah, who had been plugging her ears with a smirk, now let her arms drop to her sides. The fear I saw earlier returned in full force, her previously pale face now a ghostly white. Did you miss? <clears throat> she squeaked before clearing her throat and repeating the question in a more confident volume. I, I thought I landed the shot, he replied, voice trailing uncharacteristically low. It only became apparent just how silent it was when the eventual ringing faded, leaving nothing in its wake. Not even the sound of my breathing could fill the suffocating void. Why? Why isn't it running? The question shared by the group only left one mouth. Pennies. As Max and Sarah remained speechless, anxiously waiting for someone to answer. I didn't have enough time to alert the others as I saw Max's shaking finger tighten around the trigger once again. This time... When the shot rang out, a burst of blood burst from the other side. The bullet tore straight through the skull of the animal, allowing me to see the greenery on the other side. And yet... It still stood. No. Even worse. It was moving. The deer's head lifted, rusty marionette strings forcing its mouth away from the vegetation. Mechanically, and with little motor control, its body turned. One foot stumbled over another, causing it to trip over itself. And I could hear Sarah let out the breath she held since Max first pulled the trigger. Her relief was short-lived as the herbivore caught itself, the sudden halt and movement causing a chunk of something to spill from somewhere within its throat. As its face came into view, Penny gagged, hand clasping over her mouth. Its left eye, once full of life, retained not a single trace of color. A gray, lifeless orb bulged out from sunken sockets, tendrils of red snaking from the ends of its pupil. Its right eye, however, was no longer there. Viscera shot out from the hole where its eye once was, brain matter oozing out like honey. Its neck could barely keep its head up, the skull limp despite the deer's attempt to keep its eye on us. All of that would have been enough to make my legs give out and for me to run screaming. But what truly did it was the fact that instead of rows of flat, dull teeth, monstrous fangs lined its rotten gums. Like the blades of a bear trap, they gnashed together, so large and out of place that it forced its mouth to remain open in a permanent savage gape. Tufts of black fur jetted out from between each overlapping tooth, the strands swaying in the wind ominously. The same color as the wolf's fur. Max immediately unloaded the clip into it, uncaring what the string of percussion might do to us. Each destructive explosion caused my ears further harm, my hands doing little to block out the noise. Sarah had already fled from the scene before the rifle could finish its barrage. It continued stumbling to us each bullet taking a chunk of bone and flesh from its face, but doing nothing to slow its advancements. Feet held by nothing but sinew and tendons dragged across the dirt. 
the clicking of its hooves reverberating through my ears. Max, realizing the futility of his actions, tossed the firearm at the beast, barely phasing it, before finally turning tail and following Sarah. Penny, seemingly paralyzed, watched the monstrosity approach us ever closer, her nails digging so far into her skin that it began to bleed. Teal eyes suddenly flicked to me once my fingers wrapped around her wrist, breaking her out of her trance. I tugged, sending her forward. Her legs attempted to keep up with mine, but failed, resulting in her white tennis shoes scraping across the muddy ground. The disjointed gallop that followed, our every step gradually sped up, the beast seemingly gaining stamina the longer it chased us. I spared a glance behind me, Penny's haunted face filling my vision. The deer's teeth snapped shut with an audible click its distended neck pushing out in an attempt to reach us. Just before we managed to reach the campsite, Penny's scream rang out, and I watched as the deer slammed its teeth down onto her leg. Blood shot out of the wound like a water balloon popping. The sudden halt of speed caused my body to lurch onto my back. I watched as its mouth opened to slam its jaws shut again, the angle of the bite unable to make a clean break. Before the blades could clamp onto her flesh, I reeled the butt of the rifle back and thrust it forward, smashing it into the animal's skull. Its teeth detached from her skin, and Penny, who had already risen to her feet, began limping after Sarah and Max. Before he could recover from the blow, I once again slammed the rifle into its head, this time breaking the skin and sending bits of skull scattering. The deer crumpled to the ground, twitching violently as if attempting to force itself to get up. However... I stuck the barrel of the rifle into the soft entrance. I managed to cave way into before firing once, twice, thrice, until all the firearm produced was a pathetic click. Its writhing seized, smoke exiting the wound as various exit shows littered its body. I scrambled back, turning to see the others stopped in their tracks, staring at me with an expression that I couldn't place. Only when I joined them by their side was Max able to break the silence. What the frick was that? He demanded, his voice cracking under the stress. I could barely formulate a sentence, the sentiment ringing true for the others. We have to get her to a hospital, I breathed, dragging the base of the rifle along the dirt, attempting to clean off the bits of brain. That thing could have been rabid. We can't risk anything. It could have already gotten into her bloodstream or... My words died out, causing silence to fill the air once more. I placed my hands on my knees letting out a shaky sigh. Can someone drive? Too dangerous, Sarah winced, looking up as the sun rays, which were already muted as a result of the branches overhead, dissipated to nothingness. There's at least a mile of nothing but trees from here before we get to the main road. We'd crash before anything could happen to Penny. Frick. Okay, does anybody know first aid? Sarah gingerly raised her hand, which I nodded at. Okay, get her to the car and patch her up. Penny, if you feel anything change, and I mean anything, tell us, alright? We're gonna stay for the night, but if you so much as feel uncomfortable, we're out of here. She nodded, her eyes refusing to leave the shallow wound left by the deer. Upon arriving at the campsite, Sarah and Penny both immediately sat down, with the former grabbing the medical kit for the ten. I turned to Max, who was kneeling over the campfire, and attempting, albeit failing, to light the pile of twigs. What the heck was that? My voice trailed off as Max shook his head, refusing to meet my gaze. Don't ask. His head shot up, his glare causing me to stumble back in a few steps. The less we have to think about, the less we're going to have a problem. We just need to get her to a hospital and then we could forget this ever happened. Max. Drop it! His shout rang out of any argument I had his voice reaching the two. Penny's wide eyes were directed at Max, making frequent stops to mine. Her expressions were akin to a patient awaiting bad news, fear interlacing her teal irises. Sarah gave Max a silent warning, to which his shoulders dropped. Just drop it, man, please. I nodded silently, turning my attention to the makeshift first aid Sarah was providing Penny. How are you? Penny's head suddenly jolted up a movement that never failed to startle me. It didn't help that my paranoia was already at its maximum, causing my muscles to tense. As Brown met a familiar shade of teal, I allowed myself to relax. How are you holding up? I continued once I realized Penny wasn't going to respond. She barely nodded her head, 
her eyes growing distant a few moments later. Her eyes fluttered, attempting to concentrate on staying open. Sarah seemed to notice this as the back of her hand lifted to touch Penny's forehead. Not that bad, all things considered. I thought you were burning up, but you just seem tired, she concluded, Penny barely acknowledging her comment. With a sigh, Sarah gently brought Penny's head down to her lap, fingers interlacing with Penny's blonde locks. We should head to bed now. I think she's had enough excitement for one day. That's... Probably for the best, I agreed, noticing that the source of light was now reduced to the dying embers. Max attempted to ignite. Me and Max will take turns keeping watch. We'll wake you guys up the moment there's any sun so we can get Penny to the hospital. Sarah hummed in approval, gently tapping Penny's cheek, whispering something that caused the blonde's form to rise. She was practically dragged to the tent by Sarah, who gave a small wave before disappearing behind the fabric. Max and I stood in silence, neither daring to make the first move. I'll take the first watch, he muttered, fingers digging into his pockets as he fished out a cigarette. Least I can do for losing my rival back there, right? You can sleep now. I got this. His attempt at humor was half danged even by his standards. Right. Disappointment etched itself onto his face as my lack of reaction caused him to sigh. If anything happens, please wake me up. He nodded, fighting the cancer stick before collapsing onto a chair, his stare fixated on the tree line. I spared him a final glance before entering the tent, which was situated across the girl's tent. Though the inferior of the two, I didn't pay the jutting rocks digging into my skin any mind. Though the sense of dread I felt in the forest no longer loomed over the air like a thick smog, that still didn't mean I could ignore the fact there was something wrong. I was so sure that something was lurking in those woods that upon being awoken by Max, I was half expecting to see his pale face, eyes wide with horror, shaking my shoulders and telling me something terrible had happened. But all I awoke to was his dull expression, eyelids drooping with exhaustion. Your turn. By the end of his words, he fell onto the sleeping bag, his loud snoring already sounding off before I exited the tent. The fire, which had already been reduced to a few desperate embers, flickered, and the wind as the dying flame miserably fought to keep itself alive. I tossed a few logs into it before beginning my first trek around the campfire, my body desperately screaming at me to return to my sleeping bag. However, the encroaching darkness, fought off by only the dying fire and the rare ray of moonlight, was all my brain needed to keep my legs moving and my body upright. Or, I hoped it would. By the half-hour mark, the butt of my rifle, which started positioned firmly in my right hand, now dragged across the dry terrain, the imprint of a circle appearing wherever it trailed. Max's shift seemed to be eventless. But never had I expected boredom to so easily replace any remnants of fear. Eventually, my wandering brought me to Sarah's seat, which sat right in front of their tent. I carefully sunk my weight into it, careful not to make too much noise and potentially wake Penny up. It was quiet. Far too quiet. Yes, it may have been the dead of night on a day with little wind, but I still found myself yearning for the chirps and trills of distant insects. Irritation was a preferable emotion to isolation, I figured. Each time my head bopped down, eyes threatening to close, a howl of wind would pierce through the silence and jolt me awake. The sun was beginning to rise, making up for the dwindling flames of the campfire when I was shaken out of my stupor once more. But this time, it wasn't the sound of leaves swaying in the wind. Nor was it the snapping of twigs. It was... Wet. Though barely audible, the crude squelches instantly brought me to my feet as I walked to the side of the tent where Sarah slept. I get that you're hungry, Sarah, but you really shouldn't be up right now. I ushered, my voice careful not to rise too high. Get some sleep, all right? However, the sloshing sound didn't cease. In fact, it only got louder. 
a faint smack of the lips accompanying it. My heart sank, and a sudden wave of fear washed over me. Come on, Sarah. Penny is going to wake up. Nothing. With an agitated groan, I walked in front of the tent, fingers clamping down on the metallic zipper. Giving Sarah one final chance to announce herself, I unzipped the entrance, only for a pungent odor to hit me square in the nose. The moment the scene inside was made visible, my heart lurched forward, and bile began rising from my stomach. The lack of light did nothing to hide the obscene amount of crimson splattered against every surface of the tent, the source of both the sound and the smell becoming apparent. Sarah's limp body sprawled out across the inside of the tent, chest caved in, one of her arms having been torn completely off. Tendons and ligaments hung out from the shoulder, bits of skin and muscle still clinging onto the bone. My eyes traveled up, catching sight of golden strands sticking to one another. Dried blood causing ropey threads to form. Frail fingers dug into the gaping hole, bringing pieces of flesh into a gnashing maw. Eyes, once mimicking the sky, now glowed a vile yellow, pupils dilating irregularly. My gaze finally descended to where the gauze once sat, where an inflamed yellow wound pulsed. As a realization dawned on me, the form paused, head jolting up like an animal sensing prey. Her neck twisted hard enough to tear her head off, exposing rows of crumbling teeth, not at all fit for tearing meat. My heart hammered against my chest at such velocity that I didn't hear the percussion of my rifle, nor the sound of Penny's mangled body landing on the ground, nor Max's heavy footsteps as he approached. By the time the piercing ringing blocking my ears faded, his fist had already connected with my jaw, sending me sprawling to the ground. The impact of the blow didn't hurt as much as the sudden shock which kept me frozen in place. Max immediately got on top of me, his fingers wrapping around my neck as he continuously applied pressure. I could barely point my finger in the direction of the tent and choked out a few unintelligible syllables. But thankfully, he understood what I was implying. The grip around my throat loosened, and he looked toward where my finger was pointed. Frick! He yelled, scrambling off of me. His eyes hesitated, unsure what part of the situation warranted his attention the most. Frick! Sarah! Penny! Frick! John, what the frick did you do? I simply shook my head, my hand rubbing where his fingers once were. I, I didn't. My words barely passed through the aching in my throat, voice hoarse from Max's assault. Penny, she, she the deer, it made her like this, Max. I wanted to say more, but as the reality of our situation dawned on us, a sudden crushing weight forced my words to die out. It was too ridiculous. I had already imagined countless scenarios for how we would explain this to the police. In each one was less plausible than the last. A mix of a laugh and a cough escaped my lips. The absurdity of the situation, taking away the realization that I had just witnessed my two closest friends die gruesome deaths. Luckily, Max was too busy checking the state of Sarah to pay attention to my hysteria. Otherwise, I wasn't sure if a punch was all I would have received. Oh, gosh. I wheezed finally managing the strength to push myself off of the ground. What the frick are we going to do? Max was delicately closing Sarah's eyes, ignored my question. Instead, directing his attention to Penny's corpse. Its limbs twitched, faint raspy, breath still being drawn despite the hole tearing straight through her skull. We burn it, he concluded, marching over to me and forcing me on my feet. They'll never believe anything we say. So we burn Penny, bury Sarah, and return ignorant. They ended up missing after we left them alone, and we had no idea where they went. Got it? His fingers dug into my skin, shoulder blades shifting painfully. All I could muster was a pathetic nod that could have easily been mistaken for a shiver. 
the merit of the plan outweighing its morals. I didn't need to look up to realize how out of his element Max was. My shoulders ached not only because of the pressure applied to them, but the constant shifting as a result of his quivering. I'll bring the shovel, I muttered, gently prying Max's fingers off of my shoulders. Once freed, I grabbed the tool from the car, returning to the gruesome scene. Who's dragging Sarah? The words felt heavy on my lips, and the moment they left, a rush of guilt flooded through my veins. How could I talk about her? Like she was just some... thing now. I stared at him expectantly, and he backed at me. After a few seconds, he finally sighed. His shoulders slumping. <sighs> I'll do it. He entered the tent, giving me room to grab Penny's ankle. The one that the wound wasn't located on. Though the feeling of the flesh, soft and pliable, sent my heart racing. I refused to acknowledge it. Max finally exited, Sarah's broken figure draping along the ground, blood pooling beneath her. The walk through the forest was silent, neither of us daring to utter a single word. The mixture of fatigue from a lack of sleep and the events that transpired caused my vision to blur. The only thing keeping me awake was the feeling of her limb and my hand. I was so caught up in the daze that I didn't notice when Penny's body began to resist, her fingers clawing at the dirt desperate to break free. I did notice, however, when five bony digits wrapped around my ankle, forcing me back to reality. My hands fumbled for the shovel and slammed the sharp tip down, uncaring who or what the source of the appendage was. There was a sickening crack and a guttural groan escaped Penny's lips. The limb, its state of rot increasing exponentially, was cleaved clean off, dark, cold blood dyeing the dirt and the shovel in inky black. Her other hand came up without skipping a beat, but by the time the decayed fingers wrapped around my calf, Max was already aiming his rifle. The percussion caused my ears to ring, but the sudden release of weight was worth it. While the idea of burning the body may have seemed barbaric before, I was now more than willing to throw her limp figure into a blazing inferno if it meant not having to see her reanimated corpse move once again. Max, noticing my hesitance to touch Penny's body once again, grabbed her remaining leg, dragging her alongside Sarah. Once we arrived at a far enough clearing, I dug the shovel into the ground and peeled back a layer of earth. The sound of the metal digging into the earth violated the silence that seemed to so desperately cling to this forest. Each shovelful took an eternity, the physical labor only heightened by the emotional toll. By the time I had made a shallow hole barely deep enough to cover Sarah, my limbs were beginning to ache. Max, noticing my exhaustion, grabbed the tool out of my hand. He pointed at the pile of dried leaves, sticks, and shrubbery covering Sarah, silently ordering me to gather more. By the time I returned, arms full of foliage, Max had already finished digging Sarah's grave. A makeshift cross made of two branches dug into the dirt acted as her headstone. I opened my mouth to tell him that marking her grave would only lead police directly to her body. But he must have already come to the same conclusion as his boot reeled back. The cross burst into various splinters the moment Max's foot connected, scattering across the makeshift headstone. Without a word, he dragged Sarah's corpse into the hole, the body tumbling down, leaving pieces of red mush stuck to the dirt walls. He kicked the dirt in, their form slowly but surely being obscured. Her face, initially stuck in a ghastly expression of agony, was now calm. Almost peaceful. Why? His voice cracked. Once he dropped the last bit of dirt, the mound barely standing out amongst the rest of the ground. He waited, and once he realized he wouldn't get an answer, his head turned toward me. The moment our eyes met, I instinctively returned my attention to the pile, where I dropped the bundle of shrubbery I held. I'm sorry, was all I can mutter before dousing her still convulsing body in gasoline. You, you didn't deserve this. Neither of you did. I'm so, so sorry. I threw the empty container aside taking the box of matches from Max and lighting one. 
My hands held the small flame over the gas-covered pile, but I couldn't bring myself to drop it. To be the one to take her life was one thing, but this? Burning her corpse until it was nothing but ashes? The fire managed to reach my fingers by the time Max's patience ran thin. He slapped the match out of my hand, the wilted stick falling onto the tower of branches. It took a second for the fire to spread from a twig, then to a leaf, then, finally, to the gasoline. A blast of white enveloped my eyes as a burst of fire shot up, tongues of flame lapping at each other until all that remained of Penny was ashes. The walk back was just, if not quieter, than the walk too. Now that the sound of dragging corpses was absent, I stole a glance at Max, the usually tall and proud figure now bent over, shoulders sinking, and his gaze permanently fixated on the dirt. Sarah, his voice cracked. The mere mention of her name threatening to tear down his walls. Sarah and Penny's families are going to blame us, but we can't say anything. I know it sounds cruel, but we don't have any other choice. If we tell the truth, Penny's body is going to be investigated. Sarah's grave will be found and will be taken in. We didn't do anything wrong, John. We don't deserve to have our lives ruined because of that thing, okay? Though it was a question, I knew better than to respond with anything but a nod. We packed our things up as if nothing had happened until my eyes landed on the second tent. Now with faint rays of sun illuminating our surroundings, it became apparent just how much blood Sarah had lost. Crimson speckled every fiber of the tent, bits of muscle still attached to the material, though the vile stench emanating from the tent filled the air like smog. We still had to take it with us to hide any evidence. Once I finally entered the old, beaten-down vehicle, I rested my forehead against the steering wheel, attempting to collect myself before starting the engine. Max sat down next to me, slamming the door shut. His gaze was fixated upon the mirror, his face twisted, a monotony. His constant blinks, undoubtedly, to make sure what had happened wasn't some fever dream. John, he mumbled. The glazed look left his eyes and returned to mine. Drive. I nodded twisting the key into the ignition. The engine coughed to life, only for the gas to sputter out and end in a chilling silence. I twisted the keys once again, and more gas was pushed to the pipes, only for the same result. Max's lips curled into a scowl, and he snatched the keys out of my hands, repeating the action. However, the outcome was much the same. No, 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 not now. Why now? His words came out in grunts, gritted teeth preventing him from speaking properly. Freaking piece of crap! His fist collided with the dashboard, causing the leather to crack and bend. I snatched the keys back, tossing them into Max's lap as I exited the vehicle. I lifted the hood, eyes scanning for any of the usual problems the truck went through. At last, I managed to find it. The distributor cap was crooked, and the electricity wasn't being transferred to the rest of the system. As I twisted the cap, however, the faint sound of footsteps caused my heart to stop. I turned to where Max was, hoping he was the cause, but only saw him sitting in the driver's seat, frantically twisting the keys. Another step led me to the vast expanse of trees, barren and swaying ominously. From beyond the shadows, a hand reached out, a hand that belonged to Sarah. Her gray sleeve stained with crimson fell down her arm as she latched onto the side of a tree, bringing her forward. The shadow of a branch covered most of her, as everything aside from the limb was doused in darkness. Sarah? Familiarity flashed over Max's eyes as a massive smile broke across his face. Without a second thought, he stumbled out of the truck, his arms opening wide, she continued to hobble forward, meek limbs barely able to support her body. And yet, the shadow never left, and her right arm remained the only part of her body visible. 
as she approached, however, it became increasingly clear that her dark silhouette wasn't the result of lighting. It was charred black. Max! Get the heck back here! He stopped momentarily, glancing over his shoulders. Eyebrows knitted in confusion. That's not Sarah! Upon taking another glance at the figure, realization etched its way across his features, and a shrill shriek escaped his lips. He stumbled back, falling flat on his butt. Sarah continued hobbling towards us, the shadow never leaving. Max scrambled to his feet, running past me and grabbing the rifle from the back of the truck. The percussion that followed was second to the clamoring of the engine as I twisted the distributor cap back into its original place. I slammed the hood shut, yelling something to Max before he could take a fifth shot. At the time, I didn't care if my signal was understood. All that did matter was getting as far away from that thing as possible. I rushed back in my seat and spun the key again, and again, and again, until, finally, the engine roared to life. The vehicle crumbling under its own weight. By the time I succeeded in starting it up, Max had already entered the vehicle. However, at the same time, the singed corpse of Penny was right outside. Her eyelids, having been burnt off, revealed yellow, pupilless irises that bore into my soul. Her jaw dangled from a few charred strings, chunks of blackened flesh still attached. Sarah's arm, replacing the corpse's original limb, hung limply by her side. It hoisted the hand up, dainty fingers wrapping around the handle and pulling. When that didn't work, a raspy gasp escaped its throat before its head was thrown back. It slammed against the window, the scorched skin sticking to the glass. As it pulled its head away, bits of flesh were dragged off, revealing bits of bone and muscle. Max, already shaken up enough, let out another scream, causing my foot to slam onto the pedal. Though her arm attempted to cling to the side of the truck, her strength wasn't enough to hold on. The moment the vehicle lurched forward, her mangled body crumpled to the ground. Bones crushed like dry leaves as a violent bump sent the car upward. I refused to look in the mirror, every ounce of my body urging me to focus solely on the road ahead. Trees encroached on a position, branches slamming against the car and denting the paint. My only saving grace for avoiding a head-on collision was the little light peeking through the canopy. Eventually, the sight of an outstretched road greeted us, towering forestry replaced by barren fields. Max kept looking behind him, making sure Penny's form wasn't hurtling towards us at breakneck speeds. Nothing. I think a part of him was hopeful that Penny would emerge from the woods, tackling Max out of the moving vehicle and ending his life. If only so, we wouldn't have to deal with the aftermath. However, as seconds turned to minutes, and the minutes into hours, it dawned on him that he would have to live with what had happened. That was the last time I heard his voice, as he was declared missing a few days after the call. The police came to me once more for help, asking where he could have possibly gone. I could have told them everything but my lips refused to move. They chalked his disappearance up to a suicide, and that his friend was unrelated to the case. I allowed them to believe it, and not just because the reality was too ridiculous to swallow. I allowed them because Max deserved peace. He had crossed the line just for the sake of hiding the truth, and I wasn't going to let our transgressions go to waste. Even if it meant letting that thing roam free. For the past week, my sleep has been haunted by faint scratches and smears against the glass. Every shadow resembled Penny's hulking body, and every sound resembled her dragging footsteps. It had gotten so bad that, for the first time since coming back from the trip, I willingly talked to someone. The police investigated whatever was causing the noises, taking more than a day to authenticate the results. Yesterday, a cop entered my room, dragging a chair behind him as he took a seat. I remained curled under the sanctity of my blankets, refusing to meet his gaze. That didn't stop him from beginning to speak, his gruff voice filling the room with the only voice it had heard besides mine in months. Mr. Matthews, I'm afraid that your concerns of someone residing outside your window are, are founded. 
my heart lurched forward, fingers clamping the sheets in an attempt to conceal their trembling. However, it may bring you comfort to know that it's someone you know. The fingerprints found on the glass belong to Max Haddock. Woo, baby! What's going on, guys? Ninja Game here, and thank you so much for listening to today's story. If you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like, as it does help the channel innumerably and does get the gospel into people's feeds as well. As please consider subscribing, as we are trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year, and it would be a massive blessing from the Lord if you guys did so. Of course, if you haven't done so already, please make sure to Read the million dollar question on screen right now, pin comment, description, if you prefer to read it that way. It'll teach you how to go to heaven by repenting of your sins and trusting in the good Lord Jesus Christ with their heaven's own strength, and then building that relationship with the Lord by reading the Holy Bible daily, praying daily, and evangelizing to people. It's great stuff, so please consider doing so. Please do so. Yes, consider at least reading it and making that decision. Of course, this, that, the million dollar question has nothing to do with the story or the author. It is for you, the viewer, to read it. So please do so. Of course, go give tonight's author a brand new author to the channel. So everybody give a warm welcome to Sublime. Go check him out in the description. His The original story link as well as his Reddit page are down there. This might be for good things to come. This story was amazing. Oh my gosh. I loved it. There's so much potential with it too. Like he could continue this theoretically. Not that he will. I have no idea if he will, but theoretically, like, there's a lot that can go on here. I don't know. I'm a walking dead guy, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, but zombies, you know, I love zombies. So cool. Um, we love zombies. So yeah, um, there's a lot of potential here, but maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if he'll continue it. Probably not, but I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him about it, um, later and, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, guys, uh, please also go mew some love. Uh, there may be, I, I'm not sure yet, but there may be an additional song later on in the video. That is uh, one that I usually don't put in, but it is from, it is Silent Hill 2, Promise Reprise. So if that is in here, um, yeah, uh, that'll be in the description. But that song itself is not new made. It is from Silent Hill 2, which is getting a remake this year. It is not in January. It's like way later. Uh, sorry for the misconception there. But yeah, so go give him some love, his YouTube channel and his music, all of that will be down in the description, as well as if you guys enjoy plush videos by chance, my brothers have a plush channel, so please go give them some love, I would highly, highly appreciate that, and it would be a massive blessing if you guys did so. I make quite a few cameos over there, so if you guys want to see me in something other than video games and horror stories, please come check it out, that would be much appreciative. As well as a little kind of announcement. Apparently, there's a lot of really good games leaving PS Plus next month. So stay tuned for that, because I'm probably I'm gonna be going for at least the ones that I want to go for. Uh, one of those being Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which is one that I've wanted to play for a long time. Won't be doing the uh, the 100% because I don't I'm not gonna buy the DLC uh, unless it's super cheap. But yeah, so. Keep that on your radar, folks, as well as a couple other random ones. So stay tuned for that guy. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do all the great stuff. Go all the description things. Sound effects are down there too, but there is no sound effects in this one. So yeah, but I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, guys, this is Ninja Gamer. Signing off.